Hi everyone, René Molenaar here for GNS 3 Volt, and I want to help you solve the external BGP lab. So we have four routers here, four different autonomous systems, and we are going to configure external BGP and exchange some routing information. So let's start by setting up eBGP between AS1 and AS2. So that's between router wool and silk. And there we go, that's all we have to do. Um, let's set up eBGP between AS2 and AS3, and you're not allowed to use IP addresses on the physical interfaces. Okay, so what we can do is use the loopback interfaces, that's no problem at all. So we can set up eBGP between these loopback interfaces over here. And this one. But of course those loopbacks have to be reachable. So I'm going to create a static route here. So my router will know how to reach the loopback interface on the other side. So let's create one on the silk and on flex. Let's do a quick test. And there we go, it's reachable. Time to set up BGP. And you have to use the eBGP multi-hop command if you're not using the physical interfaces. And so let's do it on this router, neighbor. And make sure you don't forget the update source command. So the updates are sourced from the loopback interfaces. Okay, so that's all good. Um, eBGP between AS3 and 4. Let's do it as well. There we go, that should take care of all my uh, BGP adjacencies. One more task, advertise the loopbacks in BGP and ensure that we have full reachability. So I'm going to advertise my loopbacks. Use the network command and make sure you type in the correct network, uh, sorry, subnet mask. The subnet mask has to be exactly the same as that you have it in the routing table. And the last one. There we go. So now I advertised all of the loopbacks that we have. Let's check router wool. You can see that it has learned about a couple of loopbacks here. Let's just try and see what happens if I ping some networks. So ping 2222 is working, that's the loopback of router silk. If I try to ping uh, let's see, here we go. If I try to ping 3333 that's router flex, then you can see it's not working. But if I source it from my loopback, it does work. So what's going on here? 
So I'm sending a ping from router wool to router flex to its loopback. It's not working, but if I source it from the loopback on router wool, then it does work. We have to check router flex for this. Show IP route. So this is the routing table. And if we look at the BGP stuff over here, you can see that it has learned about 444, 222, 111. But it uh, doesn't know about network 192, 168, 12, which is the link between wool and silk. So in order to fix this, I need to make sure that we advertise this link as well. Like this. And now you can see that I can ping it. And I can also ping 4444. Excellent. So that seems to be working. Let's check router silk. And here you can see we have the same problem. If I source it from the loopback, it's working. But it doesn't work because this um, interface over here. So the link between silk and flex is unknown to router cotton. You can see it's not here in the routing table, it's not being advertised by any routing protocol. So I'm going to use router silk and advertise the link between silk and flex. There we go. And now you can see that the ping is working. Let's try flex. That's working now. This one is working. And this one is working. And from router cotton, if we try to ping the loopback of wool, it's not working. But we, uh, and that's because wool doesn't know about the link between cotton and flex. So let's advertise it. And we'll see what happens. There we go. Now it is working. There we go. That's all there is to it. If you're uh, working with BGP and you're doing some labs, you really have to try to become the packet. And that sounds a little bit silly, but try to imagine you're an IP packet following your path and try to think like a router. So you have to imagine like, okay, this packet is going from one router to the other router. What will be the next hop address? What will be, um, uh, is that next hop, is it reachable? And so on. Try to imagine what the path of the packet looks like. That's really important for BGP because um, the big difference between BGP and any of the IGPs like OSPF, EIGP or RIP is that with an IGP, if you see it in the routing table, then normally it's reachable. And for BGP, this is completely different. You can see things in the routing table or BGP tables, even though they are not reachable. So try to think like a router, try to become an IP packet if you have to solve any problems. Good. That's all I have for now. Um, I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, make sure you check out some of my other BGP labs. For now, thanks for watching and till next time.